The year without a summer is a phenomenon that frightens Europe. The shutdown of the thermohaline circulation, the circulation having to do with the Gulf Stream, for example. This is a translation from a Greek article. According to new research, we're on the brink of yet another climate disaster, which among other things will bring Europe and North America facing a new great famine. The ominous scenario that scientists through thought that we uh, would be called upon to face in the next century is already happening now. Most have at least one vague picture of the Irish potato famine that took place in 1845. That's when a lot of Irish left to come to the New World, to North America. That's uh, when, because of the Great Famine, millions of Irish left their homeland to survive, searching for their future across the Atlantic. Also, the Americans may not know much about the Famine of 1816, but the Europeans, even if they do not know the details, have heard of the year without the summer, thus designated 1816, the, fall, the year following the explosion of the conditions of uh, the, the Tempora volcano of Indonesia. That occurred in 1815 and resulting in the volcanic winter in the summer of 1816. World temperatures dropped by only 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 degrees Celsius and the lack of food throughout the northern hemisphere as crops were destroyed by either frost or complete lack of sunshine brought hunger, deaths, and revolts. The year without the summer reverts to the dramatic impact of climate change as it remains one of Europe's biggest fears. The reasons why, why that famine two centuries ago still scares Europeans is because, according to scientists, the chances of it coming back due to climate change are extremely high, except that now the duration will be very long, much greater than one year. And as a result, it could cause prolonged famine in Europe, but also in much of North America. Disease, uh, population displacement, desertification, conflicts, that's what climate change has brought with it in the last decades of the Middle Ages. The year without the summer, in 1815, the Tambora volcano in the then Dutch East, East Indies exploded spilling um, huge amounts of ash into the upper layers of uh, the Earth's atmosphere and with the estimated volume of ejecta equaling to 160 cubic kilometers, the eruption was the largest volcanic eruption in recorded history. Ash warped the planet by dropping the temperature vertically and this was enough to bring Europe the worst famine of the 19th and 20th centuries by natural phenomena. Low temperatures and heavy rainfall have led to the destruction of the crop in Britain and Ireland. It wasn't just the low temperatures, it changed the climate, heavy rainfall. Families in Wales have been forced into begging, begging for some food covering long miles on the other side of the country. The devastations in the crop of wheat, oats and potatoes from which the Irish were completely dependent in northern and southwestern Ireland have caused an unprecedented food crisis in Germany Food prices have soared and people have begun raiding grain stores and bakeries. European cities have been plagued by arson, looting and riots. However, this chaos was created because for one year, the temperature dropped to less than only one degree Celsius. The mere assumption that the cold can persist and persist from one decade to the next and that the temperature drop is more than one degree is enough to conclude that in such a case, Europe will live a nightmare scenario with a social and economic crisis, the exact size of which is impossible to estimate due to the unpredictable sequence of developments. Climate change is certainly not a working affair. Scientists are in the process, and scientists, including political scientists, have known that over the last 30 years, global warming has pushed the desert south of Syria, as has happened in other countries in the Middle East displacing over a million families uh, of farmers as their crops became dust and sand, along with the war and conflicts in Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia. Just a few years of prolonged bad weather is enough to make Europe even worse than today's Syria. Death, hunger, and disease will be hovering over the continent, 
and huge uh, hunger, disease will be hovering with conflict, and huge demand for food will trigger cries, a crisis around the world. The great ocean carrier is on. This is when uh, uh, the uh, current goes around the uh, ocean. But how can global warming freeze the eastern part of North America and the whole of Europe? A deep ocean stream called the Great, Great Ocean Carrier Zone, scientifically known as AMOC, brings the warm South Pacific water down to the southern tip of Africa and then down to the east coast of South and North America, reason of the Gulf Stream in the west, in, into Western Europe. This stream, the water river, a river of water, the largest by volume of all inland rivers in the world, sends millions of tons of hot water per minute, per minute, to an endpoint just south of Greenland and west of Britain. As this point, at this point, much of the heat of the water rises into the atmosphere to warm Europe. Subsequently, the cool and saline water ends up deep in the ocean in order to begin is this journey back to the South Pacific. The Global Ocean Transport Zone, perhaps familiar to those who have watched the documentary In Awkward Truth, transports warm surface water from the Atlantic to the Arctic. Along the way, this water warms the air at high latitudes and then cools, sinks and reappears in the equator where it circulates as a current at lower depths. Because the system is powered by both temperature and sudden salinity, as it loses heat in the North Atlantic, it's called the thermohaline. It's the thermohaline uh, circulation. It is noted that fresh water freezes at a higher temperature than seawater. In London and Amsterdam, which are latitudes similar to Calgary, Edmonton, Alberta uh, of Canada, the same weather conditions are in place with Europe because of the Atlantic Ocean, which is tempered by heat and salt. Britain, Germany, and the Netherlands, Poland, all of Northern Europe, and Scandinavia are about the same latitude as the area that starts from central Canada and reaches Alaska. All that gives them temperatures that are ideal for rich crops, unlike Alaska, is the heat distributed by the Great Transmission Zone. The key regulator of AMOC's continuous motion is the incredible salinity that is formed in the North Atlantic as the current gives heat to the air of Europe. Because the highly saline water is much denser and heavier than normal seawater, it sinks to the deeper parts of the ocean, pulling the remaining stream behind it and thereby helping to maintain the AMOC flow. Now, if something begins to supply fresh water to this area by dissolving the salinity of the AMOC at this point, then the density of the water will decrease, which means a decrease in flow, a slowdown in the water conveyor belt as one descends switch into Europe's main heat source. The ominous scenario is already happening. According to alternate.org, this is a scenario that most climate scientists hitherto have considered far-fetched, even in relation to the next century. But it is already happening both in the Antarctic and off the coast of Greenland because of the melting glaciers. Just a month ago, last April, scientists found that eight of Antarctica's largest glaciers showed signs of dissolution. Part of the AMOC traffic is running around Antarctica. And because of global warming, Antarctica dumps hundreds of billions of tons of frozen fresh water into the ocean each year, which dilutes and cools seawater and further reduces the local circulation. Chris Mooney wrote in the Washington Post on March 14, 2018, in an article entitled, One of the Most Thrilling Forecasts for Climate Change Can Come True. New research based on oceanic measurements off the coast of East Antarctica shows that melting Antarctic glaciers actually supply fresh water to the surrounding ocean, and that in turn blocks the process by which cold and salty ocean water sinks below sea level in winter forming the densest water on Earth. Meanwhile, in the northern part of the Great Transmission Zone, that warms Europe, is in trouble in the North Atlantic, as hundreds of billions of tons of cold water 
fresh water from the melting Greenland Glacier are melting each year due to its overburden. And according to a new study by the University of London and the Woods Hole Oceanic Institute, the problem in the large transport zone began in the Industrial Revolution, when billions of billions tons of carbon dioxide were emitted for the first time in millions of years of human evolution. The large transfer zone has since been disrupted and its disintegration dissipation speed has sounded an alarm to the global scientific community. Scientists are now worried that there is a strong chance that we will be near the turning point at the moment when this hot and salty river will change or even collapse rapidly, almost without warning, a dramatic change that would take tens of thousands of years to reverse or to restore. As Dr. Michael Mann, one of the world's most recognized climate scientists and founder of Stick Hockey, that Al Gore made popular on television show on April 24th, is a potential turning point, said Dr. Mann, and once it starts happening, it will evolve rapidly. The danger is that there is already a significant slowdown in ocean traffic patterns, and this increases the likelihood that we will be at the point where it will virtually simply close. He also added that until recently, scientists thought that we had 100 years to deal with this catastrophic scenario. He said, if we are talking about taking climate models into account, even up to five or six years ago, we would say that the scenario is not likely for at least another century. We didn't expect it, but it's already happening now, unquote. The Americans may think that not their own problem, it's a European development, but the consequences will also be disastrous for the U.S., and Canada. As NASA scientists note in one of the few climate change websites that Trump's followers have not yet uh, downloaded, quote, without the enormous heat generated by these ocean currents, which equals one million electricity generators, uh, generations at nuclear power plants, Europe's average temperature will probably drop to five to 10 degrees Celsius. Such a drop would mean average global temperatures towards the end of the last glaciation season that was around 20,000 years ago. Consequently, the lives of these children and their offspring are no longer at stake. If these dire predictions are confirmed immediately, then our lives are in danger. And uh, the uh, image I have of the uh, thermohaline circulation is from Wikipedia, the great ocean conveyor belt uh, that I have here. Uh, the shutdown of the, uh, according to Wikipedia, the shutdown or the slowdown of the thermohaline circulation is the hypothesized effect of global warming on a major ocean circulation. The study suggested that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, AMOC, has weakened by 15 to 20 percent in 200 years. And the shutdown, the global warming could via the shutdown of the thermohaline circulation trigger cooling in the North Atlantic, Europe and North America, this would particularly affect areas such as the British Isles, France, and the Nordic countries, which are warmed by the North Atlantic drift. Major consequences apart from regional cooling could also include an increase in major floods and storms, a collapse of plankton stocks, warming or rainfall changes in the tropics or Alaska and Antarctica, more frequent and intense El Nino events due to the associated shutdowns of the Corocio, Liuin, and East Australian currents that are connected to the same thermohaline circulation as the Gulf Stream, or an ocean anoxic event, that is, oxygen um, uh, O2, below surface levels of the stagnant oceans becoming completely depleted, a probable cause of past mass extinction events, because if the ocean doesn't circulate, it has no more oxygen in it. Effects of weather on weather. The Hansen uh, study 2015 found that the shutdown or the slowdown of the AMOC, besides possible contribution to extreme and EMEAN events, will cause a more general increase of severe weather. Additional surface cooling from ice and melt ices increases surface and lower tropospheric temperature gradients, causing them in model circulations simulations a large increase of mid latitude eddy energy throughout the 
mid-latitude troposphere. This turn leads to an increase in baroclinicity produced by stronger temperature gradients, which provides energy for more severe weather events. And this is on uh, translated from a Greek article, the Adrastica. And I'll leave a link below for you for everything. So we get the idea of what's happening. We've already seen this last year with the tremendous havoc and uh, uh, destruction of the uh, because of the severe weather of the uh, severe winter and then severe rain and floods in the United States especially and also worldwide. This is a very serious situation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.